so we know there is an issue with rheumatic heart disease, especially in underdeveloped countries. And as we were studying that and looking at it, seeing that it really is a severe and, and serious issue for children, that was the that was how rheumatic rescue started. If you take a look worldwide, there's about 15 million people who have rheumatic heart disease, and there's over 200,000 people a year who die as a consequence of rheumatic heart disease. And as far as an acquired disease, meaning one that they weren't born with, as far as heart problems go, it's the number one killer of children worldwide. And so we focus in Samoa. We're gonna stay there until we figure it out and work out our template, our blueprint, if you will, to know how to deal with this and make a real difference. It's, an, it's a disease that we know we can prevent. We can, we can diagnose it and we can prevent it. And although it doesn't rank among the most highest issues among children, it's high enough and it's radical enough in these children and their quality of life and the resolution of it to have to have open heart surgery. Our goal with this whole program is to try and catch children who are in the early phases so that we can start delivering the antibiotics that they need and prevent them from becoming serious. We're talking about valvular malfunction in a child's heart that's completely preventable. We have this worldwide disease that affects millions of people throughout the world and there's a very simple treatment. The purpose of rheumatic rescue is to decrease the prevalence of rheumatic heart disease worldwide. And the way we will do that is through educating, through clinical aspects, and now testing out any possible genetic links. These three arms cover the immediate need for clinical screening, for uh, assistance uh, for those children that are being affected. It provides for the future needs by incorporating both the education and the genetics components. And so we know we can make a change there by, by educating them, by diagnosing these kids early, and by possibly finding a genetic link. So when you take the, just the educational component, you have to be considerate of cultural things, their language, their educational level, just different dynamics so that you can effectively teach them. We work with university students and they've developed a puppet show that teaches the children the basic things about a sore throat. And then the songs that we sing are, are meant to create a repetitive song that you can't get out of your head that deal with the symptoms and the way you would treat so that we could just get them into the proper health professionals. Everything they do is in the Samoan language. And then we've got to go to their caregivers, their primary caregivers, their parents or their school teachers. When you look at rheumatic heart disease, it's a familiar term to people, but they don't understand it. And it's not unique to Samoa, but in a lot of countries they don't know that it starts with a strep throat. We work with the National Health Services personnel, and they're usually the front line dealing with the parents, so they can speak to them in their language, answer any questions, schedule follow-up appointments. That's absolutely critical that they deal with theirs on both sides, so that the health professionals there feel like they're in charge of this, they're handling it, and that the parents then gain that trust in them and not the rheumatic rescue team. We're getting all the different levels that can actually affect this long term. After the kids have the students teach them and they do the puppet show and sing, then they come over to us and we do the clinical teaching and the examination. We have students who have stethoscopes and they listen to the children to see if they have murmurs. After we make that notation, then they are moved on to the next station and we have ultrasound technicians who do echocardiography. And that is the best way to screen kids for rheumatic heart disease. And so they'll do a very brief examination and just kind of make a determination, are they normal or not? If they're normal, then they send them on, they go back to class, and we don't really do much with them then. If they're abnormal, then they need more attention. And so we have a second sonographer who does the ultrasound pictures, and they will do a more comprehensive echocardiogram. As part of that we'll measure their height and their weight and get some more information from them 
and then we do this more comprehensive echo. One of the most important things that we're doing is taking the time to train the Samoan personnel to take over and perform the things that we are doing so that after we are gone, they are able to continue on with the screening, with the education, so that this becomes an ongoing perpetual benefit to the children of Samoa. So if a child does have rheumatic heart disease, then you have to make a determination. One, is this a serious case? Or two, is this one that we're catching in the early phases? To the children who have the severe cases, they're already in desperate need and so those are generally sent to the surgeons in New Zealand and they get surgical repair of the damaged valves. Here we can take a very serious problem, do a very simple intervention and mean a, a whole difference between a child's life. The third component of the rheumatic rescue program is a genetic research component. So Rheumatic Rescue has been working in Samoa for several years and over the course of those years the statistics that they've been keeping have demonstrated that certain schools and certain regions of the islands are more severely affected by rheumatic heart disease than others. Uh, we thought that it was possible that those villages and those regions had genetic susceptibility to disease. And as we examined the existing scientific literature, we found further evidence that there's a heritable component to whether someone's strep infection, when it goes untreated, turns into rheumatic heart disease. And we saw this as an opportunity to increase our knowledge about this terrible disease and possibly increase the awareness of this disease so that we could move towards a solution. As the clinical group screens children, and when they find individuals that screen positive for rheumatic heart disease, we ask them if they have loved ones or family members that have also been affected by a disease. If they answer yes, then we work with the school officials and the government health officials to identify these children's parents, and we pursue the family, we interview the family, and if we find evidence for multiple affected individuals in a family, then we collect DNA from both the affected and the unaffected individuals in the family. We collect the DNA with saliva samples. It's very quick, it's not invasive, it works very well. And when we return back to the lab, we extract the DNA from the saliva, and we will obtain genetic information from those samples and look for genetic variations that, sh that is shared among individuals that are affected by rheumatic heart disease and absent in individuals that are not affected. Our genetic findings will provide us with fundamental new knowledge about rheumatic heart disease. Uh, I think the most important application of this information is to increase awareness among the Samoan government, among Samoan health officials, among health officials around the world, that this is a problem uh, that affects many children and that it's a problem that's specifically severe in Samoa due to their unique genetic heritage. The children that we find that are sick are very sick and they don't know it. Their parents don't know it until we come or until something serious happens in their lives. So these children can either be treated and helped and lead a productive life with good quality, good quality of life, or they'll have the effects of this that can take a short amount of time or a few years, but their quality of life will be affected, their ability to function and to be productive. And in countries where you need your physical health just to sustain your basic needs, that's a big loss. We can intervene and they can really go from terribly sick to really almost a, a normal lifestyle. You know, you can look at us and it depends on which perspective you're looking at. We're either a major research project or we're a humanitarian effort. I don't know of any other organization like us in the world. This is a major undertaking in, in every area. We're not just an awareness campaign, we're not just a humanitarian clinical effort and we're not just a genetic research project or a clinical research or an educational. It's, it's pretty, it's exciting. <laughs>
that's when you know it's effective and it's working is when you can't tell who's benefiting the most from the program.